In this video, we'll discuss conditional flow control and build logic into our MATLAB M files. What we want to do is understand the concept of conditional flow control and how to use logical tests to determine which commands to execute. We do this through the use of the if, else if, and else commands in MATLAB. And then what we'll do is look at combining conditional and iterative flow control. Remember iterative flow control we talked about using for loops to work with matrices and to implement more sophisticated MATLAB programs. So let's look at the basic structure for a conditional flow control. The idea here is to control which commands are executed based on the result of a logical test. So basically the way this works is we say if the logical test, if it's true, we execute one set of commands. If it's false, so else, that means it's false. We'll execute this set of commands. And then the end is required to end the block, the if block. Note the whole else side here, this is optional. So we could, as an option, just do something, one or more commands, if the logical test, for example, x less than 5. If that logical test is true, do a set of commands and then do nothing. We still need the end. Or, if it's true, do one set of commands. If it's false, do another set of commands, and then end. Let's look at how this looks on a flowchart. So here's a flowchart. We can see we're coming in. Here's our previous commands in our code. And we come into the logical test. So here's the if statement. And we'll say if it's true, we're going to go this way and execute one set of commands. And then we come back down to the rest of the code. If it's false, we'll go this way, execute a different set of commands, and this is off the else statement. And again, it, this whole set, having an action to do if it's false, this is optional. It's not necessary. So here's an example of where you might use this, and that would be an adding error checking on function inputs to your M files. This is an example. I think this was from homework four. This is a problem from homework four where you had to build a function that outputted four vectors, evens, odds, ratios, and up down with one scalar input. And part of that function was that that scalar input was supposed to be a positive scalar integer was part of that homework problem. So here I've just presented the solution to that problem again but what I've added is a logical test to make sure that the input variable is a positive scalar integer. So here's the test. We say is a greater than zero. So we're saying is it positive? Is and, and I use the double and because a is a scalar. <coughs> Does a equal round a again from the previous video? video that's testing is this an integer and length a equal one so here we're testing is a a scalar variable as opposed to a vector if all of those are true then we're okay if any of those are not true in other words if any of those not true the expression inside the parentheses evaluates as false and then I put a not in front of it because the if statement will only execute if the logical test is true. So the not is how we make the if statement execute when everything is false. We put the not there, so that changes it to true. And then what we're going to do is use an error command. This is a MATLAB command, built-in command. And that MATLAB command lets you output your own red errors to the command window. So down below we can see um, 
an example command window session using this function here's a negative value plugging in that negative value causes the logical test here to evaluate as false which the not operator changes to true which makes the if block execute and that outputs the error and so here you see the text input variable must be a positive scalar integer that's the same text that we told it to output right here input value variable must be a positive scalar integer so this is a common practice to put error checking on your inputs to make sure they're in the required range for the use of your function it doesn't mean you don't want to still put that information in your help comments I left the help comments off of this just for space on this slide so what happens if we have more than one condition that's where we can use the else if command so if we have multiple selection criteria so if we have one logical test if that's true we want to execute one set of commands so if condition one is true but if it's not true we want to test a separate a second condition so if we see if condition two is true then we execute a second set of commands and then else if all conditions are false then we can execute a last set of commands again that's optional and we can have more than one else if we can have as many else ifs as we want so let's look at an example to see how this works so here's an example called assign grade dot m this is a function that assigns a letter grade based on an input score so here we're using a standard grading scale and we're going to say if the score is greater than or equal to 90 the grades going to be an a else if the score is greater than or equal to 80 the grades going to be equal to a b else if the score is greater than or equal to 70 grade is equal to c and so on lastly if it's not greater than or equal to 60 we get the else and the grade is equal to f notice that because we're using the else if here we don't need to say something if the score is greater than or equal to 80 and score less than 90 we don't need this to complete that test for the B grade we don't need that because we're using the else if the else if already determined that the score this command won't even execute if the score is greater than or equal to 90 so we've already established that this condition is true so we only have to figure out if it's greater than or equal to 80 before we assign the B and so on down below let's just step through this in MATLAB and see exactly how these commands execute okay so now we're in MATLAB and I'm about to call the function with an input score of 83 so let me go ahead and hit enter and we get that grade is equal to a B well, let's go over to the M file and put a breakpoint and call it again so that's what we would expect let's call it again this time maybe a score of 75 and we'll step through it this time so here we are we're about to execute the first the score is 75 that's not greater than or equal to 90 so it should be false and we'll see when we step that it jumps the green arrow jumps directly to the next else if and now is the score which is 75 greater than or equal to 80 no that's false so again we'll jump here to the next else if is the score greater than or equal to 70 yes that's true so when we step you'll see now we're inside the if block ready to execute that command and we'll set grade equal to the string C and after we execute that you'll see now we're past the end it will not even evaluate the lower conditions here because of the way the else if structure works once we find a value that's true 
we execute those commands and then we leave the if block and since there's nothing else in this file that means we're ready to leave the function okay well let's see what happens let's say we want to do a series of grades so let's say we want to do grades equal assign grade and let's try a couple um, 56 let's say 89 say everyone did really well put in a vector here 89 92 93 65 and 78 so there's five grades and we'll hit enter and we go here and now here's our value score is now this array is it greater than or equal to 90? Well, we see that uh, two of the scores are greater than or equal to 90, so they should get A's. So we'll step, and we see, oh, it evaluated as false. And there's, here's what's going on here. It evaluates as false because for the if statement to evaluate as true, every element in the ve vector score needs to be greater than or equal to 90, and they're not. So we'll step again. Again, every element needs to be greater than or equal to 80. And we see the elements, we see three of the five are greater than or equal to 80. Here, every element is not greater than 70. So again, we're here. And now, the grade is equal to a D. So everyone gets a D because one student scored a 65. That's probably not very far fair. So we need to write a different function to do this, and we'll talk about how that works in a minute. But the bottom line is for the if statement to execute, every element in this variable score and in this logical test here, which is an array, a vector of ones and zeros, every element must equal to one. Or in other words, every element of score must evaluate as true with the logical test. So let's go back to the presentation and talk a little more about this. So I think flowcharts can be really useful to help understand exactly the programming flow when we're working with if statements, conditional flow, and also iterative flow. We introduced flowcharts when we started talking about iterative programming control. So what I want to do and do this partly as a model for you is to flowchart how this if else if else statement is working and then uh, you might pause the video and try that once yourself first so what we're doing is we're coming through and we'll use a uh, diamond for our test and I'm just gonna use an S for score so we're saying is the score greater than or equal to 90 <coughs> excuse me so if that's true, then the grade is equal to an A. If it's false, I'm going to go here and say, is the score greater than or equal to 80? If it's true, our grade is equal to a B. If it's false, we go this way. Is the score greater than or equal to 70? True. Grade equals C. False. Is the score greater than or equal to 60? True. Grade equals D. False. Not another if statement. Grade is equal to F. And then what we're doing is all of these are joining together to complete and continue with the rest of the code, which in this case just is an end statement. So the other complication we saw here is what if the logical expression is a vector or matrix? We saw that the if statement will only execute as true the commands that require a true result if the logical test is true for every element in the matrix. In order to make this work, what we're going to have to do is 
to use if statements along with a for loop to work through the elements of a matrix. Basically, the for loop, we can think of it as going to scan through the vector or matrix and apply the logical test to each element and act one element at a time. So here's another example of a time when we often need to use for loops. So here's how we can modify that grade assignment function to work. I've changed this to use numeric letter grades since we're going to be storing these in a vector. I don't really want to get into formatting the string, the strings of letters in the vector. And so now I've changed the file name to assign grades. So notice the file name change and the function name change. So now what we're going to do is go in and here we pre-allocate grades. And we're going to output a vector of grades and we're going to go in a for loop and using the length of the input to determine the number of iterations for the for loop and then we put the same if structure inside here but notice we're working one element at a time so I'm using the index counter from the for loop to work one element at a time so this is now a scalar this is the single element of score so this is a scalar that we're using in the if block and in general this is what you want to do is to use a scalar to use your if statement because then it's not going to be confusing with having to have every single element in the vector evaluate as true in order for these commands to execute. So what I'd like you to do is to step through this one in the debug mode with a vector of scores as an input and try that one yourself. I think that'd be really valuable. Look at how this function builds this vector of grades. And now let's look at another example. This is a sign change counter. This example, which I have also uploaded as an M file for you to download and play with, counts the number of sign changes in a vector of numbers. Consider zero, positive, and negative as three different signs. So numbers, the input here is a vector, and basically the for loop, again, using the length to define the number of iterations. Now it's doing length minus one because what we're doing is we're going through each way numbers, so the element times the next element. If that's less than or equal to zero, that tells us there's a sign change, and the second test right here is making sure that it's not zero times zero. So if two subsequent elements are equal to zero, we want to make sure that doesn't add to the counter. And so now we just have a counter variable inside the for loop. So we come through and we test first element times the second element, is that less than or equal to zero? If so, we're going to add one to the variable count. If not, we're just going to scroll through, go to the second element times the third element, third element times the fourth element, fourth element times the fifth element. Again, download this M file and try it out in debug mode. Scroll through and watch what's happening. So a question for you about this code. Can this code be vectorized? We talked about in the iterative programming video that it's a good idea to vectorize the code whenever possible. And the answer is yes. We can accomplish the same thing for this code as follows. And I'll do this in a couple steps. So one, we can create a vector called, say, products, and that's going to be equal to numbers one, 
to n minus 1 times numbers 2 to n. So that statement <coughs> is a vectorized version all at once of this first part of our condition. Multiplying numbers in index times numbers index plus 1. So here we're doing that all at once. Then what we want to do is count. Remember we can count by using the find command, or sorry, by using the sum command. So we can just say count is equal to sum of prods greater than or equal to 0 and now we need to think carefully about this other step number sub index not equal to number sub index plus 1 well again we can use that same thing that we had here numbers and I'm just going to kind of scroll it down here. Numbers 1 to end minus 1 not equal to numbers 2 to end. So again, here's two commands that do the same thing as the previous example. And that vectorizes this code. This is probably better than the previous approach, but the reason I'm presenting this example is for you to compare the vectorized code to the non-vectorized code and see what we're doing with this nested if statement inside a for loop and really understand how that's working. Also, the vectorized code really starts to demonstrate the power of MATLAB of how we're doing something with two commands that required these two nested programming structures. If we were working in Java or C++ or another lower level programming language, we would not be able to vectorize this. We'd have to use that approach. Okay, so let's summarize. So we want to use if statements to add logic to your M file. That's the main goal in this video. We can use an if in structure for single conditions to, like error checking. That was the error checking example. If else end if we have two conditions or if else if else end for three or more conditions. Often but not always we'll need for loops when using if statements to control co command execution based on con conditions evolving elements in a vector. We saw that this is necessary for assign grades dot m but not necessary for the sign change counter so make sure you understand why it was necessary in one case and not necessary in the other case and that concludes this video